A Real Bug's Life, streaming January 24th on Disney+. Plus. How you doing? My name's Terrell from Big Gold Belt Media. How you doing, Bill? How you doing, Nathan? Great, great. Thank you. We're a long way from you. We're over in England and it's pretty cold over here. <laughs> it's pretty chilly over here right now, too. <laughs> so <laughs> you see, I got I got to put the little hood on. It's a little, little chill. Um, so so we're here talking about the the new show, uh, A Bug's Life, which I thought was going to be a sequel to the movie. I was like, oh, I, I was a little confused by that. <laughs> so they had to put a real Bug's Life in like the subtitle. Um, I guess my, my, my first question going into this, guys, is what made you want to... I guess explore a little bit deeper into the realm uh, of bugs here. Cause I, I, you know, you, I feel like we've seen obviously other national geographic specials and, you know, stuff where, you know, you go into depth, but what, what did you want to do with this that made this a little bit different from every, from everything else that was out there? I'll start. Shall I? Um, well, yeah, you've seen a lot of national geographic specials and a lot of them have probably been about big cuddly mammals that are running across the savannah and killing each other and having lovely cute babies and all this kind of thing. We wanted to do something different. We wanted to talk about the group of animals that makes up 90% of the species on earth that is fundamental to life on earth. It's there at the bottom of the food chain. It feeds everything. It recycles everything. It pollinates everything. And it's completely overlooked. You know, these are tiny heroes and they have epic adventures. You know, we wanted to see um the world from their perspective understand the challenges they they face right. and um and surprise people with an incredible bunch of animals and we've been able to do this because new technology has enabled us to get down at their level to see their faces and to understand their lives and and their troubles um so this was a great opportunity to tell those stories by by linking up with the pixar um and seeing how they would have made it you know they got into characters they get into humor they get into trouble and um <laughs> that is what we wanted to replicate but with real bugs and, and fact is so much more interesting than fiction right i i, I gotta say you know, after watching this i have no interest to travel to any city now <laughs> I, I, I i after i was so creeped out I, I really just couldn't even sleep just thinking about man i've been to these cities and if, if, if <laughs> it didn't work on him <laughs> you're gonna be, be falling in love with these yeah. guys Terrell. oh my goodness like I, I it makes me not even want to eat anything unless it's still in the package at this point i mean like the one little illustration <laughs> with the fly. Uh, hey, <laughs> maybe you should watch the rainforest episode those, those, those <laughs> are a bit more cute oh my goodness and then the fact that this is in like 4k <laughs> I don't need this to be in any higher resolution than it is already in. Like, I, 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 I'm not usually creeped out by bugs, but I think seeing them that close, like you, like you said, you guys have the technology to do that now. Um, I mean, <laughs> like how? I mean, I, I guess like how? How do you even go about this? Like, what's the technology used to to do this? Is it like a, a thing you can't talk about? Oh no, we can, we can talk about it. Okay. So. We're in a really fortunate position where over the last few years, all of these amazing new lenses have, have come out. Yeah. Um, they're called macro lenses, and it means that you can get very, very, very close to things and blow them up to, you know, bigger than life size. Right. Um, and also probe lenses, which able you can get big and close, but you can also see the landscape behind yeah. them. It, doesn't, it used to be the background was completely out of focus. So you would only see the bug in isolation, but now you can see it in its world. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we're using all of these like very specialist um, uh, lenses to do that. And then we're controlling the camera um, with like robots so that we can get all of these very, very smooth, very cinematic moves like you'd expect to see in, in an advert or in the movies for real. And how are you controlling that? Controlling that with a, with a gaming I get like a, a PS2 controller. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're not we're not even really touching we're not even really touching the camera anymore. Um, for, for, to work on on this tiny, tiny, tiny level where um we're using screens and then doing everything remotely like a like a gaming console. I have mine set up. Do you remember Goldeneye? I do remember Goldeneye. Yeah, mine mine is the same controls as Goldeneye. <laughs> That's like the analog stick. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the like, like you said, like, you know, you guys are, you know, in a safe environment able to, to do this now. Now, I do notice, like, you guys have, you know, of course, with all of these, they have, like, you know, um, dramatizations throughout it. Um, it's kind of hard. I, I think I really had a hard time trying to figure out if you guys use CG at all in this and what was real, because everything looked pretty, pretty good. I would say, like, you know, all the bugs. I, I was like, okay, is this is a really close shot or is this a CG bug? I, you know I, what, there's... 
there's a couple of shots of a fly flying around with a bit of CG enhancement. I mean, it's it's all fly, and then there's a bit of um, <laughs> enhancement just on the flying around the city. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to get that shot. But apart from that, the bugs are all real. You know, this is real animals on on uh, on location. We worked with entomologists, you know, bug scientists to um, make sure that we were in the right place at the right time um, with the bugs. Um, you know, you can't follow, to, to be honest, you can't follow one bug for days and days and days and days. So sometimes we would use um, body doubles and stunt doubles to help tell the story. But in any one sequence, we try and keep the same bug, you know, like if you're in a nest of 10,000 ants, you're never going to keep track of one ant. But a lot of those ants are doing the same thing and would react in the same way. So we're working with um, scientists to make sure that every storyline we tell, every reaction, every fact is real. And uh, all of the bugs are real except for those couple of flying shots. Right. But um, yeah, no, it's, it's all, you know, you just haven't seen bugs that close before and you didn't realize that they looked so cool. No, it's, it's, it's the eyes, man. <laughs> <laughs> all, all eight of all them, them yeah. all of the eyes. <laughs> I mean, up, upon doing this, um, you know, as, as you guys state, like there's thousands of different species of bugs. I mean, they all yeah. have a different purpose. They have me upon, upon doing this. I mean, did you, were you guys able to really, uh, were you able to discover anything that you didn't know before or, you know, see anything that you hadn't seen before? Want to talk about the bees? Yeah. Um, so one thing, well, what else could we talk about that we, we haven't? Could, what about the I know we can't spoil anything just yet. So. Yeah, no, no, there's loads of different things to talk yeah. about. The cockroaches are pretty cool. I mean, oh, I don't know. Oh, my goodness, yeah. Uh. <laughs> yeah. I did I think, not need to see a roach. Let's talk about the cockroaches. Uh. <laughs> Did you which which episode did you watch the city episode? So I, I think they I I was able I got like four or five like how many of them? But I'm trying to they all five had to, of them. yeah. So like I said, I mean definitely seeing like the the roaches hatch and it was just like episode one I think, um and I and I was already like I gotta pause this I need to take a break <laughs> I gotta Nathan walk away. Filmed, from... Nathan filmed that bit. Oh Nathan, my goodness! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and I had I had just so finished funny. eating right after like why like before I watched that I was like I should have I should have went on this on an empty stomach. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> trash can I, tell you what, I tell you what I was amazed by, and this is you know the scene with the spider that tries to go to bed in the in the alley and he's hiding in the little glass bottle yeah. and he makes himself a little sleeping bag. And tucks himself up inside mm. the sleeping bag and he's snug as a bug in a rut. And then the mantis turns up and then he goes to sleep and he has a dream. I mean, this is true. Spiders dream. And if they dream, what do they dream about? You know, they probably dream about flies. They could dream about mantis. They could dream about people like you who don't like them that much. But uh, <laughs> it is incredible to think something that big is dreaming um, like we do. You know, they're so relatable, these animals. They've got the same problems as, you know, that spider's trying to find a home in the city. If you do go to, there's a movie called The Out of Towners, which is uh, about two guys from out of town turning up in New York and trying to find somewhere to live, trying to find some food, trying to work out how to get around. It's the same for a spider. You know, this is this is our problems on their scale. And each episode is it, it, things like that. You know, this, the, the rainforest episode is about two bugs that have hatched out from their nest and they've got to go out into the, jungle the most biodiverse place on the planet with billions of other bugs and they've got to find their job they've got to find their place they've got to find their food how are they going to do it no one's going to teach them they've got to follow their instinct and follow the bug next to them and see what happens right um getting away from the bugs for a second what made uh what was the choice to get aquafina the the, vo the voice over here i mean the the narration well, there's been a lot of shows which have had a pretty serious narration before. You know, there's a lot of David Attenborough. We love David Attenborough. You know, he's a hero. But that's a certain generation likes that, a certain type of person likes that. We wanted to open up the world of bugs to a whole new bunch of people. We wanted young people to enjoy it. We wanted families to enjoy it. We wanted anyone to enjoy it, really. So we wanted, you know, we knew people like you were a hard hard nut to crack. Oh, uh, that there were people who weren't going to immediately go, oh, I want to see a bugs program. But we thought, well, if we have an entertaining narrator who's a great storyteller uh, and she can get us, you know, she's not just telling you about these things. She's experiencing it as well. She's reacting to the, to the situation. And she's, you know, there's a few of the things where she goes, Oh no, she's, she, she's talking for the bugs. Sometimes it's quite a different kind of voice and, and, and um, style as well as person. Yeah. I mean, I can imagine you guys bringing uh, bugs into the booth, just messing with her. <laughs> just getting a reaction <laughs> we didn't need to she was freaked out enough but she she loved it and i think by the end um she was a bug fan too but she yeah she certainly a lot of it was fresh to her 
I mean, there, there's so obviously there's so much we can cover, so much we you know you guys can stories you could tell. Uh, what's what's kind of the plan for for this series? I mean, I, I guess once we get into that that territory after this airs, but like, I mean, we're we're I mean, are, are, were you guys just thinking of just doing a series on bugs, or is this is going to be like a a different thing on like every type of like species? Uh, well, we've got um, this. The first five episodes are coming out on January the twenty fourth. That's series one. We've already made series two, which is going to come out okay. hopefully later in twenty twenty four. So that's got four more amazing stories, but also a, a behind the scenes episode. Um, so you can you can see how a bit of it was done for, for yourself. Um, I think we take on, you know, a lot of the. I think the genre that we work in is always evolving. You know, it's it's every pro project you work on is different to the last, but you take with you a little bit of the culture, a little bit of the understanding, a bit of the technology, a bit of the storytelling from your previous project. We're now working on different projects um, at different companies, um, but I would say I'm definitely taking a lot of bugs into my new project. And although it's not all about bugs, there are definitely going to be bugs in it. Uh, Nathan, Bill, uh, I, I meant to ask you this when I first came in, but how long have you guys been in the field? Like, how long has this been like your your, your, your thing that you were you were studying? Well, I, <laughs> I'm a bit older than Nathan. I started my first job in this was in 1996, which is I don't know how long ago that is. 20, 27 years ago, I went out on a shoot to film monkeys in West Africa. Uh, and before that, I did a zoology degree. And before that, I had pet frogs and snakes. And before that, I had, you know. A very unhappy mother but um, <laughs> so so yeah all my life i guess which is about 50 years okay. and nathan um i i used to be an advertising photographer until about uh, eight years ago oh, wow. um, yeah and then i i trained in um in wildlife filmmaking um and then have been sort of specializing in macro uh, like filming tiny things for the last six years or so now, every show I've done has been another, another inset one, another inset one, and then <laughs> bugs it's like the final. Right, we've got all of the, the 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 tricks and the skills and the technology now. Let's do like the one. So that's that's quite the transition. Like you go from like that that level of photography to hey, now we're doing bugs. <laughs> so that's what I mean. That's what's special about this series is the, the look of it and the the, the storytelling and the uh, design was meant to be a bit different from normal natural history shows. We needed people like Nathan to bring his his eye to the show and uh, his tastes. And, um, you know, the, the whole team, we were just talking about it before we were talking to you. It was an unbelievable team of people. I mean, uh, there's an estimation that 400 different people have worked on this series. Wow. That's from field guides and, and entomologists and scientists and drivers to um, the core team in the office, which was fluctuated between 20 and 30 people. Um, but everyone... I always used to joke it was a bit bit nerdy, but you know they love bugs, and they you couldn't make this series unless you did, and we, and we really hope that that message gets across to to even people like you, uh, uh, Tyrell, and you're gonna you're gonna love bugs too by the end of watching all these shows. Uh, I find it funny you say like over four hundred people. Like I always find it funny like you 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 know movies are made and TV shows are made all the time, and yet you never see them actually get made. <laughs> like so, I, how about how we people have not seen you walking around, you know, doing this research and stuff like that? <laughs> like well, they did when Nathan was in New York filming the um, filming that dog pooping on the street and the oh. fly coming in. <laughs> they saw him then. Yeah. <laughs> well, like what are you doing, sir? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what happened. Yeah, people were um. The New Yorkers didn't, um, they didn't show us a huge amount of respect for, <laughs> for, for lying on the street on our bellies, filming a dog poo covered in flies. They uh, <laughs> You have to watch the show. It was well worth it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, okay. Cl closing this out. Uh, what is something that you want the fans to take away from this? And what, you know, something that you want the fans to, to look out for while watching this? My, my quick answer to that is that um, a lot of people take bugs for granted or don't even like them. And once you get down to their level to understand that they are real characters and real individuals, that they've got families, they've got the needs that we have. And once you fall in love with them like that, then you realize that how important they are. Each of these episodes has a different aspect of a bug's life to it. The first episode is about finding a home. The second episode is about working out what your job is. The third episode is about creating a family and, and so on. And so once you've got that picture, then you can fall in love with bugs and realize how important they are. They're important for keeping the world clean. They're important for pollinating our plants. They're important for uh, killing other pests. They've got all sorts of uses. They're bottom of the food chain. Without them, the birds, everything else will disappear. 
we're going to struggle too. So we need people to fall in love with bugs and understand them and protect them. That's what I want people to take from it. That uh, was amazing. <laughs> so like I said, I mean, like you said, come come to Disney Plus, uh, National Geographic. You know, every, every, I hoping everybody gets to watch this too, and hopefully not as creeped out as I was. But I, I'm sure they'll get it's, it's education. <laughs> but uh, Bill, Nathan, I really appreciate you for taking the time out of your day to do this with me today. Uh, I, I really, I really, really appreciate the the insight that I got that I wasn't expecting to get uh, out of this show. It's really well done, really well shot. And I, I, you know, maybe not. It didn't need to be in 4K. It's really, really clear. But <laughs> whatever that is, it's really good. I, thank you so much, guys, for doing this. I hope people, I hope people watch it for themselves and, and appreciate um, what you're saying, but also do love the bugs a little more. And you know, thank you, thank you. We've been really enjoyed it. No problem. Thank you so much. See you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.